Hey guys, welcome back. We're here again at Panavia, Panavia, eh, who cares? So I'm making this video mostly because of the Facebook group that I'm with for the Fairlane people. Um, everybody pretty much knows how to swap a rear end, but this is an 8.8 .8 swap. This is removing the factory 8.0 rear end. This is the factory rear end, comes with a 3.0 gear, really great behind a 3.02 and a C4 if you want a cruiser car, but if you're going for more of that street car, this is where you go. You get an 8.8 .8 out of an Explorer, grab one with disc brakes if you want to do disc brakes, you narrow it on the long side to equal out the short side, overall you will end up with 56 and one half inch from hub face to hub face. When you do them into the fair lanes, you lose a half inch on either side. So you get a little bit more narrowing, which allows you a little bit more tire. And in these cars, that is a wonderful thing. So let's quick go into the swap. I got asked if the swap was hard. Literally to get that old one out and this new one in on purchase and welded in and bolted in, probably an hour, I mean, really really quick not complicated no special tools get your u-bolts out of the way drop your shocks blow all that out slide rear end out slide the new one in bolt everything back together here's one thing that's going to be super important so grab your pencil because i'm going to show you a part and a part number and i'll describe why you guys are going to want to write this down with the fair lanes and i don't know if you can necessarily see it but the great thing that everybody does is because the wheelhouses and the axle center line originally was so far forward, you couldn't run a tall sidewall tire. A lot of the guys run the 15 inch rims and once they get up to 26 inch or so tires, they rub the front of the fender. The idea is, along with the Thunderbolt cars, did the same thing. They moved the center line on the leaf spring and the axle one inch backwards to allow more clearance in the front of the wheelhouse to get the taller tire in. So let me show you the part number for these perches. And one other thing, when you do these perches, you're going to lose about a half inch in height because they're a little deeper than the factory perches, which are very shallow. So just be mindful of that. And let me go show you guys the part number. You can get them on Summit. They're like 54 bucks, pretty cheap. Never mind the mess, we are a working shop and we work on, yeah, those things. So here we go. Here's our part number, 5495. Notice it has three holes drilled to where you can go back an inch or you can go forward an inch. This is what gives you that rearward offset the only thing you'll have to do, and when we get back to the rear end, because of the Caltrax, they have a binding clamp. You need to cut about a half inch off one end. Um, for guys that will ask, because I know they're going to ask, e-brakes. If you take out the stock e-brake mechanisms, what do you do? You run the universal kit out of Summit for e-brakes. Um, let's go back to the car. Boop, 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 boop. Big 440 motor, because we like American. Cobras, lots and lots of Cobras. So, as you can see, we've cut a little bit of the length off the perch to get past that binding bracket. Only if you're running the Caltrack monoleafs. If you're running stock leaves, you won't have to deal with that. As far as drive shaft connection, stock length drive shaft right once you add the flange and get the conversion joint it sets you up with the right amount of slip up at the back of the transmission bang right in only if you move the rear end that one inch back so just to recap this again this rear end center line has been moved one inch back allows you to run the stock length on the drive shaft everything marries up with the conversion joint Bing bang. This rear end came to me with 373s and a limited slip from the factory and disc brakes. These are junkyard rear ends. Cheap, easy to get a hold of, very strong. That's why a lot of people run them. So if there's any more question guys, you can hit me up in the comments below or catch me out on Facebook. Catch me in the forums. Look for 
Virgil Exner on Facebook. Send me a message. I will help you out and answer what questions I can. And just for one more thing, this is a 9-inch rim with 245 on it. I can go to a 10-inch rim and run a 275 tire on a 40 sidewall and get much more rubber on the road, which is the end goal. But like I said, if you guys got questions, hit me up. Anything about the setup on the car you guys would like to know, ask away. And hey, thanks for stopping in. We'll talk to you later.